Hello everyone. Today we're going to walk through how to set up your online Etsy shop. First thing that you want to do is go to Etsy.com and that'll bring you to their page. You'll go to register. Actually mine says sign in because I have another account already, but we're going to go here and register. Oh. Register. No. Okay, so once you've registered, got your information in there, you'll go back up to the top where it says your account. Go down to sell on Etsy. Then you'll come to this page and you go to the center where it says open your Etsy shop. Click on that. Okay. And so here's where we'll get started on your shop preferences. You don't have to do anything except for down here at the bottom. They just ask if selling is your full-time job, your part-time, but hope to sell full-time, part-time, that's how you like it, or other. Um, I would put one of the top two, and I don't know that it really makes a difference, but I know Etsy wants to make sure that you're serious about selling on their platform, um, but that's up to you how you want to fill that out. Then you're going to name your shop. So one thing to remember on your Etsy shop name is all of your words have to be together. There cannot be any gaps or any weird characters. Um, so let's see, we'll put art designs. So then we go over to check availability. It's available. So let's say I would have put oops. So see it'll say not available there. Then they'll give you their snazzy name generator down here to give you some ideas. And we have one lady at one of our workshops that would could not move past this because she wanted a specific name for her shop. This is not a crucial thing to, I mean, it doesn't have to be specifically what you had imagined if it's taken. You can put that in your banner somewhere, um, in your description but you have to have this to open your shop. So, you know, go down and, and pick one of those or make something else up, change how you spell it, um, just however where you can get past this. But keep in mind, you can only change it once, once you've got it all set up and published your page, your shop, you can only change the name of your shop one time. After that, you will have to contact Etsy and work with them about changing it again if you have to. So let's just pick this here. It's available. Save and continue. Okay, so I don't know why they just did that. Okay. So save and continue. Then you come to stock your shop. Here's where you're going to add your very first listing. So we'll click on this plus sign. They give you an option to show up to 10 photos for your listings. Um, they also give you tips. 
So you'll see on each one of these squares, they give you tips on what you need to do or what you should do for each item. Over to the left, you'll see other tips. So we'll click on that for our first one. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so you'll notice that in the center of this photo, there's a little orange circle with the triangle and the exclamation point. So what that means is that this photo is actually smaller than they suggest. It doesn't mean that they won't let you post it. If it's too little, they'll let you know and they won't let you post it. Um, because I've shared this and it's a JPEG and I've used it so many times, it's too low of pixels now, but I can go back and change that if I need to later. So there's also a place, you notice I clicked on adjust thumbnail. So this is the smallest that I can get it. So i um, just going to try to arrange it to where it's centered. So your thumbnail will be what shows on that item in your storefront. So you want to make sure and pick your very best photo for of that item for your main primary photo because like I said that's the one that's going to show and then you're going to show each angle. If you have variations of your items then you want your primary photo to show the variations otherwise people will not see that um, and that's if, if it's possible. And so people can see that in your storefront and realize it. So then we'll go down to your listing details. Um, your title include keywords that buyers would search, use to search for your item. So let's see. Printed bead design on adjustable so then we'll go down to about this listing I made it if you have other people in your shop that you're going to be sharing with or if you're working with a company that's helping produce things um, for you, then that's where you'll click those. You'll come over to what is it. And unless it's a supplier tool, um, then you'll put a finished product. When did you make it? So ours are made to order. If it's a one of a kind thing, then you're going to click on the appropriate dates. Okay, so then after I did that, you'll notice underneath it says this item is handmade. Okay. On your category, so we're going to start typing in some, so we've got cuff bracelets here. So once you start typing it in, you're going to have a drop down of all these different options. So you'll want to choose the best option for you. And they tell you if you don't see your items category, try being more specific or you can add it manually. So with ours, we're going to hit this first one here. So now shoppers will find this item in all of these categories, jewelry, bracelets, and cuff bracelets. So that's good. So then you come down, and, and I will say, once you start putting in details about what your product is, Etsy is going to create question specific to your items. So say, you know, if it's t-shirts, then it's going to ask you things like, is it v-neck, crew neck, short sleeve, three-quarter length sleeve, things like that. So because ours are cuff bracelets, it's going to ask completely different questions to set you up 
And the great thing about Etsy is, you know, not only do they do that, but, you know, some people get overwhelmed because they're asking so many questions and some of them seem repetitive. But this is to narrow you down, to narrow down your item um, so that people can find specific details you know if they're looking for something specific then they will find your item so we put men women and unisex on ours and the cuff bracelets are aluminum so they give you a lot of choices on those um, if it's recycled if it is that's great I would, and these all say optional you'll notice over to the left but I would say anything that will help get your item seen, use it. Um, they give you lots of different options here. So we've got, and on the sizes, if it's something that you need to put in a size, I would definitely do that as much as they ask it and also put it somewhere in the description of the item. Okay. So we were talking in one of our workshops about that there's not a Native American style option. And at first it kind of upset us about it, but then I thought, no, we don't want that because can you imagine how many people would use that that aren't Native American? And so we're glad. I mean, you can put that in your description if you want to. So it gives you a lot of different choices on all of these. And if you want to be able to personalize it, that, that would be a, a good option. It's going to ask you that in other places as well. Um, if it's something that's specific to an occasion, holiday. Okay, so on your renewal options, you can have Etsy automatically renew it once it expires because it lasts for four months. You'll see over here, each renewal lasts for four months or until the listing sells out. So if something's sales and you have more of that item or um, after four months, if you want them to just renew the listing and charge that 20 cents, then you can click here. And we do that because we, you know, can print it over and over on these. Um, if it's a one of a kind item, then of course, you know, you'll want to do manual. Um, or if you want it to where you have com complete control over it, then you can do manual. So then it asks, is it a physical or digital item? So our cuff bracelets are physical, but we've had people in our workshops that do um, say patterns for regalia or sheet music and things like that. So that's where they would click on the digital. In your description, it says start with a brief overview that describes your item's finest features. Shoppers will only see the first few lines of your description at first. So that's when they do like a Google search. That's what they'll see. Um, so not sure what else to say. Oh, you can type in about the process and the story behind this item. So let's see. We did the printed bead design on adjustable. So this is the same thing we had in our title. You can do that again, but remember, it's going to show in your Google, and I'll, I'll show that here in a second. So I'm going to move that down, and I'm going to put, um, let me see, this cuff was designed, oops. Um, 
Okay, so and I could tell the whole story behind um, this particular um, design and you could put that there and then make sure like this, um, we had, even though we had it in a couple of places that one of our cuffs was an actual print of beadwork, not beadwork, the person, the customer did not see that and they thought it was actual beadwork. And so after we shipped them to them, they let us know that it wasn't what they thought. And so they sent it back, but I thought that was kind of funny for $15, expect a real beaded um, cuff bracelet. So you may want to do something like this. If it's something that you really want your customer to see, you know, put it in all caps, you know, put something to get their attention. And then you put your So somewhere in there, like I said before, put your size again. Okay, so once you get your description all put in, notice underneath the box it says preview listing as a Google search result. So you click on that. This is going to show you what it actually looks like when somebody sees it on Google search. So see the, the main header will be printed, be designed on adjustable aluminum cuff bracelet by Newmark Art Designs. This cuff was designed by. So if you don't like how that looks, and if it's in the top part that you don't like it, you'll go up back up to your title and change the wording on that. If you don't like the bottom section, then you'll go back in your description and change it and then keep hitting that preview until it, comes up the way you want it to read. So if you are working with someone else, like we have um, calendars that we do for, or that we participate in for a gallery, and they actually produce it, but it has our artwork in it. So that's where you would click on that and add that production partner, and it'll go down through all your details there. On your section, it says optional, but if you're going to have more than one thing in your store, you want to do that. So, like with this product, it's a cuff bracelet. We're going to have several cuff bracelets. So, we'll add that section. So, the reason that you want to do that is when someone gets into your shop, they're going to see all the sections. So, that's going to tell them Say if we have cuff bracelets, we have t-shirts, we have original art, we have printed art, we have mouse pads, we have coffee mugs, we have tiles. All these things are going to be listed out as sections. And then people can click on the section and go to those items specific to that section. So remember that because we had um, one gentleman that didn't understand that and he had a section for every single item, even if they all, like say if they were all cuff bracelets, he put them each in a different section. So he had like a jillion different sections and it was just chaos in his shop. Okay, so then we're going to get to our tags. So this has to do with your, you know, your SEO, um, how people are going to find you specifically by typing in different um, words in the search engine. So you want to use the most descriptive words that you can possibly think of. They give you 13 here. So you can do words, you can do short phrases, and you'll see they give, um, different ideas here. So shape, color, size, function. So we can put, um, there's one. Um, Mm -hmm. 
So that, that just gives you an example of what you can do. And you want to make sure that you use all 13 of those. So then we get down. And you know up at the top we already did a place where it said materials. So here's another place where we can add that. Um, so if you're doing like real bead work, you know, you could put what type of beads you use, um, what you use to string it on. Um, and if it's on leather or if it's just, you know, bracelet, if you have any kind of metal attachments on it, you can add that here. So you can use up to 13 on there as well or 14. So then you need to decide your price. One thing I'm going to point out is they're going to tell you over here, um, remember to factor in the cost of materials, labor, and other business expenses. If you offer free shipping, make sure to include the cost of shipping so it doesn't eat into your profits. Okay, so they've changed that. It used to make it sound like you need to add in your shipping here. You don't need to add it in unless you offer free shipping. Then you're going to have to make it up somewhere in your pricing. So our wide cuffs are $15. And then you'll put how many you have. Don't put more than you actually have in stock. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and um, possibly get in a bind to where it's going to give you a bad reputation because you cannot produce what you promised. So you want to make sure that you have the items that you're listing in stock. So I'm just going to leave that at one. If you have more, put that. Um, and here it's optional to use a SKU, SKU number. So this is for people that really um, keep track of their inventory and have a SKU number for each item or for each category. So if you don't understand about that, you can click on learn more about that. On your variations. So you'll notice up at the top that we had two different sizes, but I only put one size, didn't I? So if you're going to put your variations, then you also need to come back any place that you've put the sizes and add them there. So see underneath where I went back up to the length, oh, that's not going to be it. But if on the width you offer multiple, see, then you'll click on that. And it says add variations below, so that'll be down here. So we've got the variations. And like I said, you know, depending on your product, it's going to go through different details. Um, we're just trying to walk you through so you can see, you know, you need to make sure that you're clicking on all the boxes so that you don't miss anything. And if you'll click on all the boxes and at least look at the different options, you'll see that they're going to offer different options that you hadn't even thought of. So the, these are good things. Don't let it overwhelm you. It's, it's not hard. It's just a little more time consuming than a lot of people want. Okay, so bracelet width. So are the prices going to vary for each width? Yes. Are the quantities going to vary for each width? Yes. So we've got the 0.75 inch width, and we've got the one point, oh, I can't even remember, 1.625. Okay, so there we've got, and then it's also got variations. So say if you've got different colors, so for example, there was a lady that had um, finger woven belts. So she had, they were all the same length, all the same size, but they were different materials and different patterns. So even different primary colors. So she had several variations and you can do that and it be one listing. So some people didn't understand that before in our workshop that 
that you can have multiple variations of that product as one listing. And then you'll only be charged 20 cents um, for each one. Okay, so they've got a thing now to where this is pretty new. Over here to the right, you can link photos with your items. So if I had a photo of this um, 0.75 inch with the narrow cuff, then that's where I would link it with this one, see. So, and then the same with the other, and that way they could see specifics on that. And that's not something you have to do. And these just make sure it's visible. If you decide you don't wanna offer one for a while, but you're wanting to keep it on there, you can um, click that off to where they don't see it. And then if you're gonna do personalization, like it asks um, up closer to the top where I pointed it out, here's where you would do that. All right, so now we're to shipping. So Etsy gives you an option to let them calculate it for you. And we do that because once you get the hang of it, it's so much easier um, and you can print your own labels and that way you don't have to worry, especially right now with this social distancing, um, we can just print it out, put it on the package, and even put it in the mailbox um, instead of taking it. We can go drop it off, but a lot of times, especially if it's just something simple like a cuff bracelet, we'll just put it in the mail before the mail runs. So we do the calculate for me, but you can also see I'll enter fixed prices manually. If this is a little overwhelming to you, what you can do to get started on it, if you have a scale, that's great. If you don't, you can package up your item, especially if you do the same size item all the time or pretty close. You can go ahead and package it up and take it to um, your shipping place, whether it be the post office or UPS, FedEx, um, or a local shipping store, and have them give you an estimate or even just go ahead and let them ship it, but take note of the size, the weight, um, and the price on that. So you'll want to go in here and do your origin zip code. So that is where you're shipping from, your processing time. So here's where you want to under promise and over deliver because you don't know what's going to happen in your life. Um, even though they give you this option to send it out within one business day, which is fantastic, I would not recommend doing that because we never know what's going to happen in our life, whether it's because we're raising small children or taking care of a parent or we have pets or we have the flu and we're on the floor for two days. Um, you want to give yourself a cushion there. So we always put three to five business days, but... Once we get that order, we get in here, you know, respond to your customer first. We get it packaged up and we ship it out. Even if it's at night and my phone does the little cha-ching, you know, then I know we've got it right there. I'll get up, come in here and go ahead and package it up and set it by the front door. And then it goes out first thing in the morning. That way your customer is going to be thrilled because they're going to get it before it's actually even supposed to be shipped according to your policy here. And then you're going to get a better review. And customers will, they love that. Of course, you know, as a customer yourself, when you order something online, if you get it right away, it makes you happy. So just remember that, think on the customer level as you're going through um, the different steps in your shop. Okay, so where I'll ship, United States and worldwide. So you'll go over to edit, unless you just wanna send anywhere in the world, then you're gonna come over here. So say if you only want to ship to the US. So you've got United States only here, but you're gonna go down here and look at this. So you want to make sure if you don't want to send outside of the U.S. to make sure and go over here and click these off. And then it's default the U.S. 
four. You can do this, but just notice, see all these numbers next to each one? You can go over here to the right and you can see every single place that it goes to. So if there's any place that you don't feel comfortable shipping to, then you need to make sure and click off of those countries. Okay, so then we're gonna get down to shipping services. So this shows you all the different services that are automatically by default. You can also go into your advanced And we go ahead, depending on what we have, um, if we have any books, then you might consider, you know, the media mail. We go ahead and offer the parcel select in case it's a large piece that um, they want to have like a cheaper rate on so that they don't have to pay priority. If you offer free shipping, here's where you'll check that. I would suggest if you're gonna do international shipping, I would not do free international shipping. It is so expensive, so expensive. And I'll show you an example here in a little bit. Um, but you can do free domestic shipping. Just make sure, like we said before, if you do that, that you cover your costs somewhere in the price of your items. Here's where you can add a handling fee um, as a consumer, if I go online and I'm buying something and, you know, it, it's $15 and I think, okay, so I know it's going to have shipping on here. So you've got $15 plus, say, $5 for shipping. And then you see that they've also got a handling fee. And so that's going to bump it up, you know, even more, you know, say five more dollars. So... I'm less likely to purchase that item myself if it's got all these extra fees. But if there's some reason that you need to add this handling fee, and, I, and some, some items people accept um, or expect it. So there was a gentleman that would have to very carefully go through and package the parts of this one item that he created very carefully and each thing was fragile and it took a lot of time for him to do that. So I can understand doing a handling fee when it comes to something like that. But more than likely, you're not gonna need to add that here. Some people, if they offer free shipping, feel like they should have a handling fee. And like I said, that's totally up to you. Um, I wouldn't add it unless you just really needed to. So then you can um, save all of this. Once you get all of this filled out, you can save it as a shipping profile. So if you've got a lot of the same products, so like with our cuff bracelets, we have a lot of those. So it's going to be kind of the same thing over and over, right? So we'll do our shipping profile under cuff. So now every time that I ship out a cuff, I can just click on that shipping profile. I don't have to go through and fill all this out again. So here's where you're going to put the weight of your item. So with this, this way they can calculate because we chose to have Etsy calculate for us. So this is the packaged weight and size, not just your item, but the packaged weight and size. Oops, no, that would be free. Okay, so once you get that in, then we can go down here. It says if a buyer lives in Chicago, then you can see the shipping price is gonna be 278. Can also go down, say, to France. It's going to be 1378. So say if okay, for some reason I did 
didn't save when we did this. So. Okay, so we've got our prices here now. So now you'll see the total price if they purchase the $8 cuff bracelet and then they're going to have to pay $13.78 for shipping to go to France. Or if it's around Chicago, then it's going to be 1078. Okay, so once we have our, oh, also notice down here, you could ship this item to Chicago with an Etsy shipping label for 278. That's a dollar twelve cheaper than like if you go to the post office, and it's way cheaper than if you go to like Office Depot, something like that. They they charge so much, so that's another reason why we do the Etsy labels. So we've got our shipping. Ah. Okay, so this is another good thing about Etsy. They will let you know if you don't have something right. So down at the bottom right, it says listing details. So that's where you'll go up to listing details. You'll see it's red right here. Okay, so once you fix that, Save and continue. Okay, so you've got your first item there. So then here's where you'll start adding all your items and you'll go through each item the same steps that we just did. And it seems like a lot, but it's really worth it. Once you get your store completely done, then you can see Okay, so here you're going to select your country, and unless you have a Swiss bank account, you're going to have the United States, and even if you decide to get a Swiss bank account later, once you've put this in, you cannot change it. <laughs> okay, so here's how you are going to get paid from Etsy. So you're going to have all of your account information here going to ask you specific questions and this protects you from fraud, um, you know, people trying to get into your account. And we cannot go any farther. Are you there? Yeah. You can't go any farther. Oh, I forgot to talk about how many ways of payment they accept. Okay. So you'll notice here at the top where it says how you'll get paid. Etsy Payments gives buyers the most payment options and gives you Etsy seller protection. So look at all the different ways, the, the different credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, I mean, a lot, and gift cards, Etsy gift cards. So there's a lot. You can also integrate it with, like I said before, your Square. And if you do, if you integrate through your Square and you take um, a credit card order over the phone or in person through your square, then you won't have to pay your Etsy fees. You'll just have to pay your um, square fees on your selling, selling fees. Okay, once you get through with this part, then um, you'll go to the next one. It'll be how you pay Etsy um, for the fees, how they will be able to deduct the fees so you'll give credit card information um, on that level. And then once you do that, then you can publish your page. Okay, and we can stop there. So now, so now, um, I think what I would do now is probably um, 
go into the back side of our other, our main one. Okay, so crud, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Yeah, give me. So once you've got all of your bank information filled out and you've got your store published, so then you're going to come up into your account. View your profile. Edit profile. And here's where you're going to want to add a picture of yourself. I know a lot of people say, I don't want a picture of me out there. I'm too fat and ugly and old and wrinkly and haven't had my roots touched up because of the pandemic. And, you know, but find, find a good picture of yourself and post that here because customers that are coming to Etsy to buy from you are wanting to buy from an actual person. They want to know that you're a real person. You're not a foreign company trying to get away with pretending like they are somebody. So add a photo of yourself here. And that also builds trust with your customer. So then you're going to put the name. So it's my husband and I. So we put both of our names here. Um, and since we're both male and female, we put rather not say. Um, where we're from, where our shop is, or where we produce out of if you want to put your birthday, and then you have your little bio. This is going to tell people about you. Okay. Um, if you have favorite materials that you use, we have too many, um, so we you know, don't do that. Okay, and then you're going to save those changes. Okay. So at this point, you can go over to the left and you see all these different icons. So let's click on this one. This is your dashboard. So here's where you're going to see all your statistics up here. The total views in your shop, the total visits, your total orders, and the revenue. If you want to see the details on it, you can click here. And this is really cool because then you can see the graph. And this is something, you know, once you get it all set up, you can come in and play with it later. It's really cool to come in and look at these as you're going. Okay, so that's this year. If you want to compare to the previous year, you'll see how, how much more our sales have improved, 67% compared to last year. So that's awesome. Okay, so that's your dashboard. Actually, that's your statistics details. Then you can click on these little things here. This is your listings. So once you get your listings all set up, then you can come back and look at them. So see over on the right, you can do a quick edit. You can have your statistics showing on here for you so that you can see how many visits, how many have favorited in the last 30 days and in all times, how many times it's been renewed. If you want to see, like say I want to work on the drafts that I started but never finished. So I can go to the drafts, click on that. If you want to see what has sold out, you can go back and look at it. And then how many you've taken off. Say if, if we got some more calendars we wanted to sell. So then we could go through and um, reissue that on there. Okay, so we've got our items here, right? So... 
say we, we need to edit, we need to change some things. Say after a couple of weeks, after you've got your store up and running and you go back and you're looking at your items and you notice this one item has not had any views for some reason. So you know something's not right there. You need to go back and, and change some of your tag words, um, your title, your description, you know, do some changes on it and then save it and keep an eye on it um, the next couple of weeks. So if you put it in the wrong section, you can go back and change it there. So this is really cool. You go down to share. So you can share it on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Twitter, or you can copy the link to it and share it. Um, we do this, say, on our um, mass email that we um, send out to our customers and our gift shops. So if we've got a new product that we're wanting to feature, then we'll do that. Um, but you can share this on Facebook and it'll come up showing and then we can type in, you know, a little promo for it. So that's really good. Okay. So then we go down and here's where you keep track of all your messages with your different customers. Here's where it has your orders, like we've got an open order right now that we're filling today. So if you have any open orders, then it's going to show here. So you'll see it says new. And um, once we start working on that and it shows it, then it'll show in progress. Once it has sent out, then it'll show here and completed. So if you need to go back, um, like with this, we, oh, and here's something else. If you integrate with your square, you need to make sure that your inventory matches up because when we first integrated, we didn't realize that it was putting our old inventory back in with our Etsy inventory. And so it showed that we had more than we actually did. So we actually had to cancel that order. And if you do that, make sure that you get with your customer immediately and let them know so that you don't get a bad review. Okay, so on your stats, like I showed you before, you have the graph here. You can see how people have found your shop. You can also go down to your listing items and over to the right, you'll see how many views, how many favored it, how many have ordered it, and how much money you've made off of this one item. So then you can go back and see what your most popular items are your finances, this is um, how much we have in our account right now that they're going to be depositing. Um, this is how much they've taken out for their different fees. So you can see all of that. You can compare your sales to your fees. payment settings. So you can, in, in the payment settings, you can choose how often you want your money to be deposited. So see, you'll see here once a month, every two weeks, once a week, or every day. And of course, we've got every day. <laughs> okay. On other, the only... The only time that I do this, and I need to check that off now as a matter of fact, so on, on doing other, we had someone ask if we could do a gift certificate. And from everything that I researched on that, the only other way to do it was to make a gift certificate as an actual item in your store. And if you do that, so say if somebody buys a $25 gift certificate as an item in your store, and then they use it and purchase something for $18, so what about that extra that they didn't use? So do you refund them that much money? I mean, it just seems like a headache, and plus you're going to be charged a fee on Etsy for doing that. So what I've discovered is if you did the more and you took um, or other work with the buyer, then you can give them a code and have them 
put that code in the note to the seller, and then they can you can arrange for whoever purchased the gift certificate to pay you that specific amount if you want to do that. If you want to accept checks or money orders after the purchase, then here's where you would do that. I don't know that I would trust that, to be quite honest. Um, too many scammy people online, but there's your option for that. Let's see, so if you're gonna set up your sales taxes here, Here's where you would do this to add your tax rates. If you're going to change from the U.S. dollars, you got it here. Your billing information is here. And your address information is here. So then on marketing, So here's your analytics, um, shows your impressions, positions, visits, conversion rate, which, you know, we don't do that, but. Okay. Integrations. So if you want to connect your Pinterest with your Etsy, then you can do that, which is a really good idea because there's a lot of people that pin things on Pinterest. And if you um, have it to where when they click on the item, it'll take it to your Etsy store, then that's getting more eyes on your store and leading more people there. If you don't understand about SEO, which is search engine optimization, um, you can go to Marmalade. You can look at E-Rank, which is actually Etsy rank. Um, and there's different ones you can look at and read through. Those are really neat to explore. If you're going to do bookkeeping with this, you can integrate it with your QuickBooks. Let's see, they have a few more of those. And here's where you would integrate it with your Square if you do that. I've actually never heard of these other ones. But there's your options there. So then we come to community and help. So you can look at different forums that are going on right now. Um, you can go to Etsy and ask specific questions. If you need help with shipping, um, policies, and that this is a, a good place to get help with policies if you don't know what to put on your policy page. Also, we talked in the previous workshop about your handbook. So here's that and all the different categories. Anything you could possibly imagine asking Etsy for, they have an answer somewhere in their handbook, whether it be in the categories, in your search, articles, side updates, and then you'll see the different places at the bottom that you can go to. Or you can contact them as well. So here you've got your settings, your subscription, your info, and your appearance. Okay. So this is where you'll go in and another part on your storefront that's going to show is your shop icon. So if you've got a logo, um, this would be a good place to put that. And remember whenever I said on your shop title or your um, the name of your store that it all had to be put together. So if you are doing that, you don't like that, you can put it spread out here. But what I would suggest on your shop title, especially if your title name um, or the name of your shop does not reflect what is actually in your shop, then put a description. So like under ours, you know, it's Moonhawk Art. So underneath that, 
we've got Native American and wildlife art. So when people come to our store, they're going to see that and know specifically what is in our shop or what type of items are in our shop. So Etsy now has a place where you can put a banner and we've changed this to um, put one of our um, most popular images. So, you know, people see the, the images of the horses and they know that it's us because that image is out everywhere. So here's where you can connect, put your links to different social media, your shop announcement. So this will be on your storefront um, that people will see whenever they're scrolling. If you want to do a message to your buyers so that as soon as they purchase something, it will automatically send out this thank you to them. Or if you have digital items, go there. And you're going to set up your policies. Oh, they've moved it. Shop home. Okay. Okay, so your policies. This will tell where, you, you know, it'll show your processing time that that you had. Um, also, you want to make sure and cover if you are shipping out of the country international, then you want to make sure you put this, that the buyers are responsible for any customs and import taxes that may apply and that you are not responsible for delays. If you're not sure about your policies, do some research, look at people that have similar shops, look at their policies, look at Etsy sample policies, and then switch them up to, to where they apply to you. And that was, it was one thing that really scared me to do, but once I figured that out, it wasn't that big a deal. Okay, so then um, they will automatically show your payment options and that Etsy keeps it secure, so they let them know that. Now, if you have certain return and exchange options, then here's where you'll have that. Cancellations, returns. So then um, once you get all of that in, Etsy gives a suggestion. They, they want you to... Um, do a frequently asked questions section. So, you know, we have one question that comes up all the time and that's the, the certain type of printing that we do. It's called sublimation. So we put the explanation on that. And then your seller details are down at the bottom. Okay, they also, tell you to add pictures of your setup, of your studio, of you. Um, also, there's a place where you can add a video. We haven't done that yet, only because I'm too chicken to do it. But, um, but customers love seeing the process. So even if you don't show your face, you just show your hands working and building whatever it is or painting, then they, they love being able to see that. Um, they also suggest that you do, you answer why Etsy, why did you decide to sell on Etsy? And I think that's for um, potential sellers to see. Um, they give you a place where if you wanna create a website, they can help you with that. So this was back to the one page. All right. So you'll see our banner here that we chose and the icon where I told you you could put your logo in and then the description underneath the name of our shop and the picture of us over here to the side. So see how neat it all comes together. All right.
And once you've done that, then you've got your shop set up. Here's the different sections that I was telling you about. So you'll see why it's important to have that organized there. So if we wanted, or if the customer wanted to just see cuff bracelets and they could click on that, if they wanted to see original art. So that way you have it nice and neat. All right, or if you wanted everything, then there it is. Okay, so once you've done that, you've got your shop set up. Um, if you need any help whatsoever, you can contact Lynn and I'll let her give all that information. And um, if you need me to walk you through setting up your shop, um, Lynn can get you signed up to to where we can make that possible. So thank you all for listening and happy sales. Thank you. As Mary Beth mentioned, if you need any assistance, you're welcome to contact us. Go to our website, nativebiz.org. And if you need assistance, go to our technical assistance tab and click on completed intake form. And once we receive that form, we'll reach out to you and set up a time to talk and get you the help that you need. So if you're specifically needing some help from Mary Beth, you can complete that form. Once I get it, then I will coordinate and set up a time for you and Mary Beth to talk.